Hello, and welcome to another episode of Into the Scriptures. My name is Wesley Vital, and today, Jadiel Newman will be going through a YouTube video with me with, on, on the topic of the Trinity. Now, the YouTube video specifically is from an individual. Let me just go ahead and share my screen here, mm -hmm. so that way everyone can see it. So this individual is, he has a half a million subscribers, a little bit over half a million subscribers. Oh. And it's Bible Flock Box. And he did a video about bi uh, Bible proof that God is a trinity. Mm -hmm. And he did it in six minutes. Now, he did say some things in this video that needs to be addressed, that absolutely needs to be addressed, because um, right. he's portraying a doctrine that is not biblical and you trying to use scripture to do that. And I think it's important that we actually go text by text what he shows here to show what actually the word of God, word of Yah says. So let's just get right into it. And uh, every text he mentions, he's going to explain it. And then I'll go ahead and pause it. And then uh, whatever you want to add in, Jadiel, you can. And I'll add uh, in as well. Sounds good. All right. So here we go. One question I was asked in a recent live stream is whether or not the Trinity is true. The concept of the Trinity is that there is one God who is made up of three distinct but equally divine and eternal persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But is that what the Bible teaches? That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video as I play a clip for you in response to that question in my live stream. But before I do that, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell if you're new so you get notified about my future live streams and video uploads. Now for the clip. So DJ Kev Kenya, hi, what's your view on the Trinity? Because I think it's false. Well, I would have to disagree with you. God is only one, the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Father and the Son. Yeah, the Bible does tell us that God is one. Let's address that first. And that is in, I think it's in Deuteronomy. Chapter 6, verse 5, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, 6, 4. It was one mm -hmm. verse before. I was close. But here's what it says. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. It tells us the Lord is one. But it doesn't tell us that the Lord is one person. The word one in the Bible can, used, can be used to either mean quantity or unity. And when it, when it says that God is one, it's talking about unity among the members of the Trinity who all work together mm -hmm. to save us. They all, all participate in the plan of salvation. Now, another example where the word... Now, I'm, I just want to stop it right there. Before he gives an example, he's going to go to uh, to Genesis and you're going to see that, Jadiel. Um, but I mean, just notice the verse he gave, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four. When you read right. it, you know, Yahuwah is, is uh, Elohim, Yahuwah is one. Now, the word one, which he's going to bring up, can be referenced as unity. It can also be referenced as just alone or one. Um, mm -hmm. But notice how he sets up. Uh, he, he sets right. up this narrative before he brings it. Because the verse actually doesn't say anything of what he just said. He's bringing, right. he's built, he's trying to use it as a building block. He's bringing you to an understanding before even showing you a verse and then telling you that what that verse is meaning. So right. it's not, not only is it not telling you um, that it's talking about mm. someone else, it's not talking, of, it's not telling you that it's going to talk about two other beings. You see, it's not just saying it's talking about more than one person or another person, mm -hmm. it's two other beings he's trying to stick in this in this um in this verse i want to mm -hmm. a, a, lot, a lot of times i think we said it before a lot of times people are not confident in defending what the scripture says they're more concerned with defending what they were taught the scripture says by whatever group church whatever they're they were a part of and and this is the confidence that we have in man that we need to now defend man's breakdown by projecting it into a place that it has it does not say it at all. And I'm going to bring up a verse connected to that because he says that it's talking about mm -hmm. three beings. Um, and I want to quote a, a verse from uh, Paul who quotes the same verse from Deuteronomy and tells you exactly who he's talking about. But go ahead. 
you want to you want me to go ahead and press play while he goes through the um let's see uh well before you bring up that verse before i bring up that verse yeah go to go to the next so this this is him now giving the example he he's going to show word one is used to mean unity instead of quantity is when god united adam and eve in marriage I'm going to try to find that for you real quick. It's going to be in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. And here's what it tells us. It says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. They didn't become one person, but they became united in marriage. And so when the Bible says that the Lord is one, that means that the Lord, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are united in the plan of salvation to save humanity. Now, so that's the example he's using. Um, now, I'm again, I'm not denying that one can be in reference to unity. Right. Um, but uh, it, it's, again, it's not proving his point uh, when it comes to why all, the, all, all of a sudden, uh, out of nowhere, he has yet to give a scriptural backing at all to a three-person or three-deity right. system. Like, for instance, with that, the Adam and Eve, it mentions Adam and Eve. And these right. became one in the verse in Deuteronomy six. It just says Yahuwah. It, it, it actually says his exactly. name, you know, it doesn't <laughs> say Yahuwah and someone else is one. Right. It just says Yahuwah. The, the Yahuwah's Yahuwah. You know, yeah. It doesn't say that the Lord's, it doesn't say it doesn't, there's no pluralized context to emphasize that the one in Deuteronomy um, it's talking about multiple. The context is talking about one entity. When you go to the marriage, he already said the two shall become one. So the two aspect is talking about the plurality of two separate human beings. The one is talking about the single aspect of being one flesh, Mm -hmm. one unit, one family. You know, so the idea that the one, that one is still talking plural it's contradicting. It just said two becomes one. It's not going to say two becomes a pluralized one. No, it's saying two becomes one. Two separate things become one singular thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, the context still makes the word echad or one a singular understanding, you know. But I like that you pointed out. Deuteronomy it doesn't say anything about any multiple at all. It's saying one, Yahuwah, our mm-hmm. Elohim is one. It's, it's very specific, especially considering that the rest of the nations worshipped many. So there's, you know, to have one is very specific, especially when everybody else has multiple gods already. Mm-hmm. You know? And just, just a verse um, that I brought up here on the computer, Deuteronomy chapter 4, 35 and 36. Um, it says, unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that Yahuwah, he is God. There is none else besides him. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee, and upon upon earth he showed thee his great fire, and thou heardest his words out of the mouth, out out of the midst of the fire. So just, you know, again, we sticking with context, Deuteronomy chapter six, if you just use that alone, with the already assumption of that it's talking about three beings, that's what he's doing. But if you use it line upon line without assuming anything, just letting the scripture say what it has to say, there's no way you can say, oh, that already means three beings right off the bat. That's right. three deities right off the bat. It's right. impossible. You have to already have that programmed in your mind to think that way when in scripture doesn't show it. Deuteronomy 4, like I just read, is, is it's in context talking about one one individual and then it's yahuwah so in in a clear just in a clear view of just looking at it for what it is analyzing the idea of the two becoming one flesh statement and paul actually quotes or he reiterates an understanding from deuteronomy right in first corinthians 8 in verse um, four to six, there's an emphasis on the fact that the world has many, many different 
gods that they worship and many different masters that they submit to. And he says here in verse four, it says, now concerning the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that the idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one. There's no other Elohim but okay. one. He then explains in verse five, he says, for though there be many that are called Elohim, whether it's in heaven or they call them from the earth, there are there's many Elohims and there's many masters. Yes. Now watch what he says in verse six. But to us, the believers of scripture, the followers of scripture, to us, there is one Elohim. And then he says, the father. They can't tell you now there's three fathers now. There's not two fathers. There's not father, the father, then son, the father, and then spirit, the father. No, there's one, the father, whom are all things, and we are in him. And then it says, and one master, Yahushua Messiah, by whom are all things, and we by him. Separating one Elohim, the Father, and one master that we follow, the Son. He keeps on reiterating and steering by saying, God the Son, God the Father, God the Spirit. These terms is already packed, filled with false ideas in it. You know, there's no statement, God, the son, you know, so, you know, that it's, it's a horrible way to look at these things, especially when you're not using the Bible to explain it. Like you're just, you're now telling me that it's talking about three and Paul is telling us what it means. Mm -hmm. You know, I rather listen to somebody in the scripture, explain it rather than you try to tell me what it says, but anyway, go ahead. Well, I mean, line upon line, precept upon precept. Right. Um, that's that's why, I mean, I'm not trying to hit on the guy or anything. You know, I'm not trying to say right, he's right, evil right. or anything. Um, I've seen this way of study multiple times where you want to lead the person where you're going. So let me establish the thought that I want them. This is how I want you to think before I show right. you the verse. Oh, right, um, right, right. Instead of allowing, you know, here's the verse. This is what the verse says. Right. This is what it is. Right. Um, but so let's let's keep going. Also, the concept of the Trinity is that there is uh, one God who is uh, made up of three distinct persons. And that's God the Father, uh, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They all have the same nature. They are all of the same divine nature, but at the same time, they are distinct persons. We know the Father is divine. The Father is God. There's uh, nobody that really argues against that. But what about Jesus Christ? One of the arguments is... Now, I just have to say, um, before he, he's, he, he's going into another argument, but notice how he gave a whole lot of information mm -hmm. and no verses, nothing. Right. He gave you this entire understanding, this thought process that he already has before he even mentions a verse. And he doesn't even actually give you a verse on what he just mentions whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give you all oh, these three are the same nature. Uh, but they're uh, all the same nature, but all distinct persons of themselves. Right. No verses, nothing. Here's that understanding, and then goes to a different argument about the Messiah now. So and, just and that is, and this is one of the biggest problems with trying to take such a misunderstood idea and break it down in six minutes. Six minutes to break down something that was misunderstood lied upon, twisted mm -hmm. up, distorted for thousands of years, you have the power to break it down in six minutes. Six minutes. That's not even fair to people who's, who's desiring to understand why they misunderstand. You know, mm -hmm. all of those things is a complex situation. There's a reason why people misunderstand. There's a people why people have, there's a reason why people have those perspectives that they need to steer you on instead of saying, look at this verse. What do you think it says? Okay. Mm -hmm. well, this verse actually helps explain this verse. So what does the Bible say to us? But instead it's words that only someone outside of the Bible could have told you. No one in the scriptures would have told you there's three persons. There's mm -hmm. three separate divinities. No one 
No one, there's no scripture that says it. So it has to be an outside source that he's trying to defend rather than trying to defend a concept that's in the scripture. A lot of, a lot of times too, you find um, dealing with conversations, um, especially in terms of the doctrine of the Trinity, a lot of regurgitation of what they heard someone else say or a teacher told them, and they're just regurgitating exactly what they were told and trying to find verses that could try to fit what their belief is. Um, Like, we're about to see some more. He's about to refer to the Messiah. Um, he, but again, he just, there's a whole lot of understanding, a whole lot of regurgitation, a lot of information, no verses, nothing that stems to him now going to an argument of is the Messiah Elohim or is the Messiah God? Right. Um, it doesn't help his cause. It doesn't help the case. It doesn't yeah. actually prove anything. It's hurting. It's hurting. It's hurting. It's hurting me. No, no, no. It's- <laughs> And it's, and like like you said, I just want to reiterate, it's not a matter of of the person. This is a this is a a perspective that we continuously see being projected through many different people who misunderstand. You know, it, it came from me. I know this argument because I've given this argument before. I've I've been and like I said, I'm not talking about this person. I've been lazy. Mm. to where I just gave you the explanation someone else gave me. I've been lazy to the point where I didn't go in, research, go from front to back, you know, the way that I do now. I've taken what somebody that I trusted said, and I told somebody else. And that's what I've been doing. I was just taking what somebody said, giving it to someone else, taking it. And and that's not what Yah calls us to do. He calls us to be disciples, or students to study for yourself what another man is trying to tell you. Scripture says, prove all things. Right. That's, that's, right. that's, that's part of the duty we have is to prove all things. Um, right. And, you know, it's, I mean, in a way we're, 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 we're kind of uh, rebuking, reproving, and also giving him, you know, helping him with tips of, Hey, you're going to give that much information, have some scriptures to try something. to back up that information. Something. something. So, know, and, right. and the phrases also the phrases that mm-hmm. you use it'll be best and you know everybody watching it'll be best mm-hmm. to use phrases that you can find in scripture like instead of god the son you don't find that in scripture but you see son of god that's a totally different concept mm-hmm. you know so to stick to the phrases that's used in scripture to try to prove scripture that way you're not trying to stick in phrases from you know three persons you don't find three persons in scripture you know so it'll be good if you want to relay an idea first make sure that your idea is solidified and structured in a verse in verses not one verse but like you said line upon line line upon line amen and so check out this next thing he's going to say um i know you haven't heard this before so this is he i i believe well we'll just see what he says you'll see it is that Jesus is not divine and that he was created, but that can simply be debunked by going to the book of John, chapter one, verses one through three. When it's talking about Jesus, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. If all things were made through Jesus, that means that he wasn't created because he created everything and it says and without him nothing was made that was made and so he was not created he is the creator and some people try to interpret this to say that this is not talking about jesus i've heard people try to do that who are anti-trinitarians but if you jump down to verse 14 speaking of the word it says and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So this is talking about Jesus, the Word who became flesh. So Jesus is divine, and what about the Spirit? So- All right, so he's about to go to another point. Yeah. So you 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 saw what he did with John one one. He ignored, and yeah. I, I'm not saying you know I'm not trying to bash him or anything, but ignoring some key details that verse is giving. Yes. Yes, very, very key details. Very key. Uh, and and this is again goes back to the whole six minutes. He has two minutes left. So he can't 
he can't really dissect it. And this is another thing. John 1.1 1, 1 is just anything in scripture can't be just thrown around like it's a surface reading type of thing. And we truly believe that the spirit gives us understanding. We then have to really dissect line, literal, literal line upon line in each verse to make sure that we're not, we're not jumping to conclusions that we are understanding what he is saying. You know, so John, you know, do you want to go into this? Because <laughs> this is, I mean, there's the, a lot in John. There, there is yeah. a lot in John. But yeah. I mean, I know for me, I. So when I go to John one one here on on my computer, right. So the thing is, I'm not. I don't know who's saying that this isn't referring to the Messiah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know who's saying that. But it's not me. I don't believe that. I believe this is referring to the Messiah. But in in first John one, one in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the world word was God. Now, right off the bat, before I get to verse two, right, right off the bat. And I'm sure you're familiar with this, Jadiel, that mm -hmm. the first word use of God in this verse is actually supposed to have a, a Greek word here that is actually removed in the King James Version. Um, but it's a definite article. So it, it's actually supposed to say in the beginning was the word and the word was with the God. It's supposed to have the the in there, the definite article right. is called. And you can look and it up. Yeah, you, there's two. There's there's the word, right? It's not mm -hmm. going to say in the beginning was words. Exactly. You know, it's saying it's very being very specific. There's there's something that's referred to as the mm -hmm. word. And it says and the word was with the Elohim, the God, mm -hmm. you know, and then it says, and the word, the word was, and it no longer has a definitive article anymore. Exactly. It's it now, doesn't appear there. It's now an adjective is a description. And mm -hmm. the word was God-like or divine. Divine. Mm -hmm. God in nature. In the beginning was the word and the word was with the God and the word was divine mm -hmm. or God in nature. In nature, in nature, you know, and so I think I think that's important to understand because that literally, I mean, just this gives us the understanding of what it means in the beginning was right. the word because we're about right. to see in the next verse it has right. beginning yeah. again. And and real quick, especially since considering consider mm -hmm. the difference between him calling the Father the God, him calling the word simply God or divine, because the same word Elohim is used for us. Us. Mm -hmm. In Psalms 82, verse 6, it Messiah, says, I, Messiah's word. I, uh, Yeah, Messiah quoted it in mm -hmm. John chapter 10. So he quotes Isaiah, uh, he quotes Psalms 86, 82, verse 6, and it says, mm -hmm. I have said, You are Elohim, or you are gods, and mm -hmm. children of the most high. So if he's using the same term for us without the definitive article now, mm -hmm. there is no definitive article when he's applying this word to us, but there is a definitive article when he's applying it to the father, you know, so the word being God without the definitive article, because he's not the God he's with him, mm -hmm. you know, so those things play a huge part in just a sentence structure, if I said a sentence that way, you would have to acknowledge those little differences to understand the context, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when we get to the next verse, it just it just expounds a little bit more on what's going on. Which in, in verse two of John chapter one, the same was in the beginning with right. Elohim or with God. But again, King James Version, there's supposed to be the definite article of the God. That part too, that part too, um, that's a, that's showing if we just look at it in a surface view, it's redundant. It's like mm -hmm. in the beginning was the word and the word was with the God. And then in verse two, it says the same was in the beginning with the God. Why would it say the same thing twice? Unless it's talking about two separate things, two mm -hmm. separate times. That's a you know, key point because a lot of people do think that he's just repeating right. the, the first verse or the second. But again, key details that is being mentioned. Right, right. Because the next thing, verse three, emphasizes on what he was with the God doing. Mm 
Mm-hmm. He was with the God creating. And not only was he creating, it was God creating all things through him or by him. It wasn't he himself um, just wanting to do whatever he wanted to do, but mm-hmm. that everything was created by him or through him. Um, you know, so when we go back, one is not talk- the verse one is not talking about creation. It's talking about the word. Mm-hmm. Well, it, two, it says it in the beginning was, was the word. The right. word. <laughs> exactly. So the ver- the first beginning was the word. The second the second mm-hmm. and third verse talking about the same was in the beginning was referring to the beginning of creation. Well, verse three actually gives you the context of right. All things were made by him. Right. So right. that second, that second and ver- uh, well, verse two, that second beginning is reference to creation. Right. And that f- the verse one, the first beginning is in reference to the word. Right. Absolutely. And that's, and that, and, and this, it clears it up when you look in detail, especially when you understand the concept of him being the only begotten son, because there's this underlying argument he's trying to address. He's not created. He's not created. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. The person that sent in the question never said he was created. Yeah. You see, so he's trying to have an argument that he had before with someone else. He's trying to address a concept that hasn't been asked. Um, you know, what mm-hmm. the what the person said, his statement, I agree with 100%. The person that called in, mm-hmm. I agree with his statement. There's a father, there's a son, and they have a spirit that enables them to be with us, you know, in a personal level. You know, what he's saying is that there's three separate beings coming one at a time. And none of them was not only was any of them created, but none of them was begotten either. Mm -hmm. But the identity of the word is that he was begotten. He's the only begotten son. So that's the question he would have to actually answer rather than addressing the fact that he wasn't created. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, that's what happens. Like when everybody... When you're taking something from someone else, they're going to tell you why someone else is bringing this up. I've learned this in the Mm -hmm. church where they're telling you they're going to say this. So you go at them with this. They believe this. So you address this. Mm -hmm. So he's addressing things that he was kind of uh, trained to address when when um, approaching this this conversation. Mm-hmm. Well, I, and for me, it's it's details. I don't believe the word the word of Yah is is you know is going to give you details that you ignore. It it it's there for context. It's there to to show you what's being talked about. Um, it's not there to ignore the beginning part and go straight into oh, see, look, uh, the word God's right there. there. There it is. That that is your marker. That is a, a that has to be. Uh, three gods the, this still doesn't prove anything of three gods i know he was using a reference showing that the messiah is 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 god is what he was trying to say but all mm-hmm. this is showing as what we were, what we were showing is just showing that he was with uh in the beginning was the word the beginning in reference to the word and the word was with the god and the word was god so it's just showing a description of him uh, of nature of that right. divinity but it's not saying right. he is the God because that title, the God is given to uh, Yahuwah, you know, almighty. And it's pretty clear there. If the, the is supposed to be there, if it was there, this wouldn't be an issue. Right. And, and, and the thing is, it may still be an issue if someone else is telling you, drilling yeah. in your mind, that Messiah is also the God. So now one person being called the God means that another being can be called the God. And if there's three, that means three of them can be referred to as the God separately. What he's trying to emphasize and not emphasize at the same time is that there's one God in three persons, but then there's three separate beings that all separately have the title the God. That doesn't make sense. You know, that's like me and you being referred to as the brothers, right? And that me by myself is the brother, the brothers, 
by myself and you are the brothers, you know, no, I'm sorry. Let me take away the plural, plural, Mm -hmm. the brother, the brother. We're both called the brother, but I'm also a brother and you're a brother showing two brothers clearly, but we're called the brother is to avoid. What is it called? Poly polytheism. So they're trying to avoid polytheism and try to create like a mystical way of saying that they're monotheists at the same time. Um, I believe that we can only talk about this because we were, we believe this at one point. Okay, Guilty. guys? Like, yes. It's not that we are just attacking this idea because we're not attacking him. This is the idea the that idea. we once held. And because we're looking into scripture more closely, it enables us to see our own mistakes from the past. Mm-hmm. You know, but just because it's our mistakes from the past doesn't mean that other people are not making those mistakes. And just just I I mean, we, I know it's going to be a long time if we get into it, but we have videos uh, about this topic, about the Messiah, about the spirit, about about the father, um, about what is, you know, is there a trinity? Is there not a trinity? What is, right. uh, you know, how is this a setup? Um, but just getting me to a point when when John 1, 1 that he brought up and we will get to his next one here. And John 1, 1, when he brings up the beginning, uh, 1 and 2, and there's two beginnings, one beginnings in reference to the word, to just n- disregard it, because I, I believe details given on for a reason. And the reason why is there's a, so many verses, Micah 5, 2, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5, they all give they all give details that are connected to John 1, 1. Same thing with in Proverbs 8, uh, they all give these details connected to john 1 1 showing a beginning referenced to the word um so it's not just there to be there and again line right. upon line precept upon precept so we have to bring all these things together and, right. and not ignore it um and say nope they you know that that right there shows proof it's god the son didn't use it didn't even use the term god the son whatsoever never in scripture does it do that and at the same time the verse actually doesn't really help you mm-hmm. um if you, you know, if you're blind to the other side of the verse, then I would understand that. Um, just take some reading. And, but again, and I'm talking. I also want everybody to know exactly what you were saying. There is no such thing as a superhero verse. <laughs> There's no verse that's going to come in and destroy a whole concept when scripture teaches us that it's line upon line, precept upon precept. Ideas are built on precepts whether it's true precepts or false ones. You have a verse that may eliminate one idea that that's not eliminating the building blocks to this false idea. You know, so when you're bringing up these six minute, not even six minutes, he's not taking six, yeah. probably like two minutes to, to break down this part, yeah. one minute really. So when you're trying to, oh, let's go to John 1, 1. See, this is the reason. And it's just like, no. It's not, it's not, this is not how we study. This is not even how we deliver truth. You know, um, I can understand why people do that because people's attention span is low, but that's not, the truth shouldn't be hindered because someone can't pay attention longer than five minutes or six minutes. You know, I can understand you, you, you lure them in, say something focused like this whole six minutes. You should have focused on the two becoming one, or you should have mm-hmm. focused on John one one. Focus on one thing, but you're trying to go to multiple, and he's about to go to another idea. It's it doesn't work this way, you know, especially with people calling in, really trying to get an answer yeah. from you. you and know, I mean, you, even even with uh, even with what so far, I'm like, if you want to do a six minute minute video, fine, but know that every point you're going to bring up, give give a verse for and he right did before this one before john one he mentioned quite a lot of things with no verse whatsoever yeah um just to, i know he's probably doing it to keep it short and everything which right right but again it, it kind of hurts what he's trying to do um because yeah. people like us who who don't believe in the trinity is going to see this and is going to be like what are you what are you doing you're leaving an entire right. gap right. um so let, let's let's get into his other point right here we go some people try to say the Holy Spirit is an impersonal force or that the Holy Spirit is like the spirit of Jesus or something like that. 
but the Holy Spirit is divine according to um, Acts chapter 5. And Acts chapter 5 talks about when Ananias and his wife Sapphira, they lied about some possessions they were had, that, some possessions that they had, and um, they were punished as a result. And here, notice what it says in verse, I think 3 is going to be, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? And he goes on to say at the end of verse 4, you have not lied to men but to God. So he said in lying to the Holy Spirit, he lied to God. So the Holy Spirit is divine. All right, so there's there's this point, <laughs> and um, it, so it's the same thing. It's the same <laughs> same thing that we've been taught. Same thing that we've been told mm -hmm. over and over. Just say this, and it's going to save the world. You know the superhero mm -hmm. verses. Like, yeah, the concept is very clear. The verse verse three and four is not talking about a, a different. It's not giving a, a an inclination God. of a different God or a different yeah. person than for, like, for instance, when it's in referencing to the, uh, to the Holy ghost, I mean, verse four, and he read it um, where it says, but, you know, but unto God. So it's like, you know, the spirit, the spirit belongs to Yahuwah. The spirit belongs to the right. almighty. I mean, it's, it's his by possession. That's why it's the spirit of God, the spirit of right. Elohim. The word of is possessive. So right off the Another bat, thing is it says the spirit, it says God is spirit in John chapter it, four. Exactly. And he's looking for them to worship him in spirit and in truth. In truth. So here he's saying, verse three says, you lied to the Holy Spirit. Verse four says, you did not lie to men, but to God. See, showing that the Holy Spirit is God. Is it not saying that he's lying to the father? Mm hmm. Is he not lying to the father because he lied to this third being that you're talking about? Or is he lying to the father? Because the father's spirit was with <laughs> Peter. Was with Peter, exactly. So it's, it's like I'm lying to the father by lying to you. I'm not lying to a different entity. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid being too excited <laughs> because this is not... Like, again, I want to remind everybody, it's probably the last time I'm going to say this. I don't want to say this too much. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about this idea that the kind idea. of hindered many people from understanding clearly who Yah is, who his son is, mm -hmm. and how we interact with their spirit, with the spirit of Yah. You know, so many things. People could have been in, in so far in their experience. When we remove, we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Truth sanctifies us. Mm -hmm. Error does not sanctify us. Yah may have mercy on us for having error, but error keeps us in the same place. It keeps us stagnant, you know? So, you know, the idea that this is just being continuously perpetuated without a good explanation, you would, you would think that I would, this being about the one true God, that you would have more reverence to make sure mm. that this is clear, especially in a world with a whole lot of false gods, a world where people looking at themselves like their God, at least take time to break this topic down to where there's no question about mm. it. Instead, regurgitate the same arguments that is always used. And um, it but just, it, it hurts more than it helps. And it it does like what you mentioned when we're talking. The, the, the Peter was filled with the Spirit. He's talking. You, he they're actually lying to Peter directly. But you're lying to the Father. You're ultimately right. lying to the Father because the Spirit belongs to the Father. Right. Um, and it, it also is when in reference to the, the Spirit of uh, of Yah, the Spirit of God. Um, Acts I think is twenty twenty eight. It has a reference to the Messiah. Uh, where is it? I think it's Acts, Acts 20, 28. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Acts 20, 28, where it says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of Elohim, 
when which he hath purchased with his own blood. So mm -hmm. even when in reference to the spirit of Yah, I mean, the, the sun is filled with the spirit of Yah as well. Mm -hmm. right. So the spirit of Yah, the sun or the spirit of the sun is constantly reiterated. It the ain't. spirit of Yah, the spirit of the sun. In, in Romans chapter Romans chapter 8, it talks about um, having the spirit of the son and the spirit of him that raised, raised up, up. Mm -hmm. his son. So verse 11 of Romans 8 says, if the spirit of him that raised up Yahushua from the dead is in you, that's the father. Mm -hmm. He that raised up the Messiah from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you, you know. And then it talks about in Galatians 4, 6, and it says, because you are his children, children. that Elohim sent forth the spirit of his son. Remember what he said earlier. He says, some people think it's the spirit of Yahushua, it's the spirit of his son. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you that the spirit is a separate being and he's divine. So why did, his, why did it say he, he sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. And then it says, wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son. If if a son, then an heir of Elohim through the son, mm -hmm. through Christ. Only talking about two individuals, father, son, father, son. Mm -hmm. Set the spirit of his son, the spirit of him that raised his son. You know, you, know, you would have to ignore these clear statements to reiterate a statement that's that's nowhere found in scripture god the son god the spirit all these statements that make you think something other than what it says mm -hmm. and you have to you have to inject the the thought first yes that's that's what that's what it won't what you would... it won't connect <laughs> it won't connect just reading it there's a, you right. have to inject the thought first um and Again, line upon line, precept upon precept. It says he sends the spirit of his son. John uh, uh, Acts twenty twenty eight shows them the Holy Ghost. You know, shed his own, you know, purchased us with his own blood. Mm -hmm. That's still in reference to the Messiah. Um, so just you know, to take Acts five and just be like, right there, that shows the Holy Spirit is a separate person in any way. Mm -hmm. It just it just doesn't work that yeah. way. And I know people use John. I think it's John fourteen with the Comforter. But I mean, if you keep reading, it's messiah is pretty clear who it is yeah me and my father will make our abode in abode you john 14 you. so i mean if we're want to looking at if we want to look at this concept you know you uh, go to go to our 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 youtube page we we dissect john 14 and different things like that but the it's not going to be six minutes it can't be <laughs> six <Man>. minutes <laughs> you need time to understand to dissect to research, mm -hmm. you need time to make sure that we're not just going into another false idea. Um, you know, we're not establishing a false idea. We're looking at what the scripture says, not mm -hmm. what we say. Three persons, you know, Trinity, God, the spirit, God, the son. These are all terms that you're not going to find in scripture. So why use it? Mm -hmm. There's no and reason to use it. And it's it's important, like like even what we're doing right now, going through some of the stuff he's saying, we're only giving certain verses, but there's so many others. Yeah. Um, and that's why having a, a, a deeper study is important so that we can go text by text. Because right. um, these these, you know, just throwing out Acts five out there and insinuating it's a third being is not helping the cause whatsoever. It's right. not proving anything either. Right. Uh, but so let, let's keep going here. Oh, more. So, yes, God is a trinity. You may not find the word trinity in the Bible, but that's because trinity is a theological word which is used to describe uh, the nature of God. There's a lot of theological words that you don't find in the Bible. You don't even find the word Bible in the Bible. Does that mean that you shouldn't believe in the Bible? There so, I'm not... Real quick, real quick. Yeah. He just said it's a theological word meaning that this is something that a group of dudes from my church came, came up with came That's together what came up with yeah. means. yes mm -hmm. so i just wanted to clear clear that up i know you're going to clear up the second part oh yeah um uh because i i told you about this and this mm -hmm. is what bothers me so man where to start so the first off 
he even admits the this word trinity is not in in scripture neither was did he show any verse showing a three beings or three persons that each one is god of themselves or whatever he didn't show anything like that whatsoever um so the burden of proof is still on him to show the rest but he Mm -hmm. then says it's like the bible you don't see the word bible in scripture now what's crazy is all you have to do is go to google and type in the origin of the english word bible and it comes from greek there's also a Latin word as well, but it comes from Greek, which is uh, bi- bibil- bibila, which is bibila, which means a scroll or scripture, which is <laughs> that those exact Bibli- terms. Biblion. It's it's Biblion. Uh, the Greek, the Greek. Let me pull it up. Is the Greek mm-hmm. uh, Strong's number G nine seven five? It means it's pronounced biblion. <laughs> biblion. <laughs> it means a scroll, a mm-hmm. book, or writings. It comes, it derives from the Greek word G976, which is bibli, biblos, which means papyrus or a sheet of paper. So the word Bible, it's actually in the Bible. It's actually in there. Yeah. 30 times in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. It's actually in there, so it's it's one of those. Hey, I'm I'm, I'm trying to build a bridge a bridge with yeah. aluminum aluminum foil, and the moment you step on that bridge, <laughs> you just fall straight down. Just because nothing is holding up after that. Because that's not holding up after. Um, he admits it's not there, and then you know he tries to validate it with an example, but that example is there. Right. It's just because you're looking. Hey, that exact English word. Because remember, the 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 scriptures is is Hebrew and Greek. It's not written in English. Right. It's a translation. So his argument is is flawed on that end. Um, should have left that last part out. We should have left that last part out. Um, but well, you should have just left this whole thing out. But <laughs> the, the idea, the idea is clear. Is is if you stick to the structure, the sentence structure, or the explanation that the scripture gives, th- there's safety in that. There's safety mm-hmm. in just saying what it says. It's just like when I when we quote each other, you know, if I say, hey, Wesley said this, if I if I deviate from anything that he mentioned, if I add a word, take away a word, restructure his sentence, Mm -hmm. I may be mis um, misrepresenting what Wesley actually wanted to say. So what we do, we quote each other, we quote each other where we say the exact same statement in order to relay what another person is thinking. The scriptures is not for man. It is from Yah. So if Yah inspired the scripture, it's in our best interest to reiterate the statements in scripture to explain our point rather than Mm -hmm. saying things like God the Son, saying things that the Bible doesn't say Bible, even though it says Bible in it. Mm -hmm. You just make yourself... I would like to see, you know, an explanation is why, why are you saying it God the Son? Like, is there an indication of scripture? I mean, that's that's those good. type of things would be good. Um, instead of just, let me just throw it out and say that this, because again, his whole purpose of this video was he said to the person who gave him this question, I disagree with you and here's why, right? I, I disagree. He disagreed. And then he says, you know, it's made up of this, this, and this, but yet he didn't show proof that there is a God, the son or right. anything like that. His focus was just let me look at these words to show a oh look holy spirit is in reference to god uh the messiah is reference to god right and that proves his point i didn't the, didn't, the didn't sad know. part is that the person that's looking for answers use statements that was directly found in the scripture, the scripture. Mm-hmm. he wouldn't really be equipped to to respond to a person that's using scripture to reference what they believe because he would have to go outside the scripture to find the answer. So he wouldn't, it wouldn't even connect until you say, Hey, only use what the scripture says to explain your point. Mm -hmm. This is what will make him and many of us kind of think about what we believe ourselves instead of being quick to tear down someone else. Let somebody Mm -hmm. lay it on the table. Look at the verses. Does it say what it's saying? Because if it does, then you have no right to disagree with him until you find out a better understanding or verses that 
counter what he's saying. But instead, we didn't hear a counter. We just heard him teach us theological mm-hmm. breakdown, which is not found in scripture. It's found by some commentary by some dude that believes in the Trinity. Mm-hmm. And don't don't give uh, like, you know, Deuteronomy 6, don't, don't inject or or uh, assume something is there that it doesn't even say. Um, which happens all the time. Like I always, when someone hears that I'm, I'm not a Trinitarian, they immediately wait a minute, but Matthew 28, 19. And again, it doesn't, doesn't say Trinity what's whatsoever. And technically, if you look back in history, that verse actually right. is supposed to be something else. Even the Catholic church admits that they changed that verse. Um, but I mean, aside from that though, if it doesn't say it, it doesn't give the detail line upon line, principle upon principle, then why are we saying it? Why are we believing in it? If right. it's, if it, if it isn't there. That so. is the main thing. Mm-hmm. That is the main thing. If we take what you just said and a self-examine ourselves, if it doesn't say what we are saying, why do we believe it? This is something very important for us mm-hmm. to self-reflect on and, and to make sure that we're, mm-hmm. we're, we're saying what the scripture says not we're saying something different but we're trying to mean the same thing no we need to say what the scriptures say because it will it will make no sense for me to be outside handing out a bible telling someone go home and read the bible and then they never come across the ideas that you presented because none of those ideas are in the actual bible so that's, it's just, it's crazy when you come into that conclusion, everything that I'm saying, you're going to go home with this Bible and you're never going to find it in the Bible. That should, that should be a red flag for yourself. Like, Hey, let me step back, make sure I can teach it from the Bible. This is what I've done. This is, I know this is what you've done. Mm-hmm. And in self-examination came to the conclusion. I have no clue <laughs> what in the world I'm talking about. You know, so praise God for his word that we can trust in his word and not have to do it ourselves. If we had to do it ourselves, oh, man. Amen. That's when, you know, I hear that. Oh, it's a mystery. We'll never know. Then why did Yah lay it out in his word? That's that's what it's. He laid out the details right there for us to read it right right there for us to go line upon line, precept upon precept. But because you can't explain it, you're just going to go. Hey, it's a mystery. No one can know the mind. Right, of right. If I can't explain it, you can't explain yeah. it. And they'll use the verse. No, no one can know the mind of Yah. But it's like, actually, if you just keep reading in that same verse. Same it, verse right after that. Right after that, he reveals it to you. By, by his spirit. By, by, by it, his spirit. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Not by the third being. You know, we're not laughing at him. We're just. <laughs> We're laughing at ourselves. You know, it's funny. This is exactly what we said. I remember coming. Mm-hmm. I remember coming to you a long time ago when I was looking at the scripture and I said, hey, you know that he's actually not God, the son, that he's the son of God. And you was like, yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> like, Because that's I'm, that's I'm right dealing there. with theological breakdowns and you're looking at the scripture. Mm -hmm. for what it said so it was like i started realizing wow people who just look at the bible will never come up with this theological breakdown we need Mm -hmm. these men to say these things to us for us to believe it rather than them delivering the word of yah to us and letting us look at the scripture and believing yah it's now they break down a theological explanation so we can believe them and then when we go out, mm-hmm. we're teaching other people doctrines of men instead of the teachings of Yah. So it's important. That's why, you know, stay in the scriptures, right? Right. Right. <laughs> so you got to stay time, in the scriptures. So again, to break those things down. So again, we're, we're not bashing the guy. Um, we're just, you know, this idea, the doctrine that's being presented. Um, it needs to be analyzed because there's there's a lot of things that is incorrect when we do line upon line, precept upon right. precept. And one of the reasons why, you know, we're doing this, um, I really would like, I wanted to do this video is not only does he have this following, but also when I read through the comments, everyone's like, amen, that's so true. You gave the best explanation. If Trinity is not in the Bible, 
it's okay because the Bible is not in the Bible. And I, you know, people just hopping onto the bandwagon and I'm, mm. I'm just like, no, 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 no. This is that, that <laughs> <laughs> please. No. Um, and he's, he's a good guy. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say he's evil or anything like that. It's just, I was once there. I have been deceived. I have had false doctrines before. Um, and it's just, you know, it just, you know, took, took me a little bit to study and read for myself and go, Oh wait, what am I doing? So I'm not saying he's lost or anything, not trying to attack him, but I think it's important to draw these things out in right. hopes that he watches it. And then other people watch it as well so that they're not caught up with the same stuff. Right. Um, because I know a lot of people is using these types of videos to share it to friends and to family on Facebook, you name it, and go, this is it. The Trinity has to be true. And right. it's like, no. In reality, did you actually pay attention to his words, exactly. what he's saying? Sometimes we're so numb to saying the same things over and over, being told the same things over and over and over and over again. We don't quite right. realize and go, wait a minute, it doesn't actually say that. Or wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense to the word one or anything like that mm -hmm. um, it's, so, it's comfortable to to have good. your own ideas to yeah. have your own ideas supported it's so it leaves you in a comfortable state like wow yeah exactly like exactly what like he's just saying what you already thought mm -hmm. when somebody says something different then is the then you get this face like wait what are you talking about wait that's not what we've been taught this whole time that's not what i understand it's not supposed to be what you understand. It's supposed to be what the scripture says, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, if somebody says something different, it's like, oh yeah, where, <laughs> you know, show me not, oh yeah, expound with your theological mind, what it said. Like, no, if somebody brings to you something different, be excited for the possibility that it may help you and that you may see it in mm -hmm. scripture. If it is not there, the tables have turned. Now you allow show. the scriptures to be reiterated to that person so that person could gain insight and learn you know that's how it is you know but it's all of this theological wrestling that we don't have to really engage in you don't have to be theological scholar doesn't matter mm -hmm. it's what the scripture says you have to believe what the scripture says you know so and just not not to join it on because we're going to end we're going to end here um but for me, when we get into that theological conversation talk, it, it then becomes more of this is how I'm thinking. Yeah. And it, and it's not this is what the Bible says. This exactly. is what the word says. No, it becomes this is how I'm thinking. I've actually had people say, no, but I, I, I feel this. I feel like it's saying this. Right. Or, I, you know, I, I think it should be this way or I think it's right. that way. And it's no, no, no. Forget that. What does it say? What does it say? Or the father told me, or the father showed me, he confirmed with me, you know, he showed me three snowflakes fall at the same time. And that's why the Trinity is, no. Yeah. Well, the, uh, I've heard the third wheel. I've heard the, the egg, you know, the Trinity is described as the yeah. outer shell, the, the yolk and the white. And it's yeah. like, I had an excellent explanation for Trinity. I don't even want to give that to people. <laughs> Because now that I, I can see clearly what scripture says, I don't even want to help this idea because mm -hmm. I haven't heard the, the way that I used to explain it. I haven't heard anyone explain it that way yet. Um, but no, we don't want to give I don't any, even want to I don't, don't even want to give no false ammunition. You know, people but, will do it. The people do it, even though even, even if you claim it, someone will take it because yeah. it proves what they're already comfortable with. Exactly. Exactly. So, I like being uncomfortable. Because exactly. then I have to trust in Yah, you know, Amen. I have to trust in the Messiah to, to guide me, to lead me, to reveal to me, you know, so I like hearing different things. I like hearing things that contrast so that way I can investigate, mm -hmm. you know, because I know that he's going to reveal it, you know, so. And some people uh, are worried about that. And me, you have to view it as, well, first prove all things. You have a duty to go right. and investigate these things, uh, regardless you know, if someone brings up to you, hey, this is crazy, um, you know, see text by text. Look up what the word of God says. Show me the word of God. They'll show you word of God. You then go and you look at it, you study it. And it may just turn out to be error, just like it is. And just like right. JDL mentioned, just as scripture shows, you go and talk to that person and go, hey, you're in error because of this scripture, this scripture. But doing what I just said right there not only builds your sword knowledge, of other mm -hmm. verses to help strengthen what you already believe. But then it also gives you 
uh, an ability to explain to others what you believe. Remember, exactly. you can give an account. So don't steer away from having, I mean, well, most people are, are scared or having these tough conversations or conversations that can conflict with something they're comfortable with, something they've always heard or something their church yeah. always held. Mm -hmm. um, but we should be open to, you know, sharpen each other's swords, you know, do battle, battle with verses and look through what the scripture has to say. But, but amen. So I'm, I hope this was a blessing to everyone. Um, and again, not bashing. That was the last time I'm going to say it on that one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like always stay in the scriptures and there's more to it. There's videos on 4ALC.com. There's also on the YouTube as well on the topic of the father, on the topic, on the, uh, the son of God and on the topic of the Holy Spirit uh, going through what is it? Uh, if is there a trinity um, there's many videos that are that are up with scriptural verses that you can go and study these things out for yourself uh, we didn't even touch like not even close to what mm. scripture has to show on the topic mm -hmm. um, but it's on 4lc.com or you can go to uh, fourth angel learning center on youtube i'll have the link on the description as well onto this podcast and onto the youtube so that you can go check out more stuff in relation to whether the Trinity is true or not. So Amazing. again, y'all bless everyone and stay in the scriptures. Shalom. Shalom.